Good morning, Church of Northern Nevada. I am Father Tom, pastor here at uh, St. Teresa of Avila, and welcome all of you here for the priestly ordination of Deacon Redding. Please maintain a prayerful atmosphere during the liturgy of the Holy Mass with the rite of ordination. And if you would please silence your cell phones, we appreciate that. You will be having eight stations for receiving the Holy Eucharist in both species. Please be respectful. Now can you all please rise for the gathering song and the entrance procession.
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, I welcome you all to this great day of joy for the Diocese of Reno. In particular, I welcome the family of Deacon Rene Rodriguez, who have come to celebrate this milestone moment in his life and in the life of the local church. Also to the many friends of Deacon Rene, especially the uh, priests who have traveled to be present. In a particular way, I welcome you, Bishop Calvo, and thank you for your presence. You have nurtured and encouraged and cared for Deacon Rene through most of his priestly discernment and formation. It brings us great joy and honor and enhances the dignity of our Mass today for you to be with us. Thank you. As we now prepare to celebrate and receive our Lord in this Eucharist and to ordain our brother to the priesthood of Jesus Christ, let us pause, call to mind our sins, and pray for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us 
us pray. Lord our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to this deacon of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of the priesthood, so that by his ministry and life he may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers while outside the door Guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains fell from his wrists. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing what happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision, seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down an alley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then. Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people had been expecting. The word of the Lord. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord 
will rescue those who fear him. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress he saved him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who fear him. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The angel of the Lord will rescue those who Lectura de la segunda epístola a Timoteo. Querido hermano, ha llegado para mí la hora del sacrificio y se acerca el momento de mi partida. He luchado bien en el combate, he corrido hasta la meta, he perseverado en la fe. Ahora solo espero la corona merecida con la que el Señor, justo juez, me premiará en aquel día, y no solamente a mí, sino a todos aquellos que esperan con amor su glorioso advenimiento. Cuando todos me abandonaron, el Señor estuvo a mi lado y me dio fuerzas para que, por mi medio, se proclamara claramente el mensaje de salvación y lo oyeran todos los paganos. Y fui librado de las fauces de león. El Señor me seguirá librando de todos los peligros y me llevará sano y salvo a su reino celestial. Palabra de Dios. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory 
When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. En aquel tiempo, cuando llegó Jesús a la región de Cesarea de Filipo, hizo esta pregunta a sus discípulos. ¿Quién dice la gente que es el Hijo del Hombre? Ellos le res respondieron, Unos dicen que eres Juan el Bautista, otros que Elías, otros que Jeremías o alguno de los, los profetas. Luego les preguntó, ¿Y ustedes, quién dicen que soy yo? Simón Pedro Tomó la palabra y le dijo, Tú eres el Mesías, el Hijo de Dios vivo. Jesús le dijo entonces, Dichoso tú, Simón, hijo de Juan, porque este no te lo ha revelado ningún hombre, sino mi Padre que está en los cielos. Y yo te digo a ti que tú eres Pedro, Y sobre esta piedra edificaré mi iglesia. Los poderes del infierno no prevalecerán sobre ella. Yo te daré las llaves del reino de los cielos. Todo lo que atas en la tierra quedará atado en el cielo. Y todo lo que desates en la tierra quedará Desatado en el cielo. Palabra del Señor. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with his formation, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose this, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Deacon Renee. It's a day of great joy, isn't it? You know who, for, for, for whom today is a great joy? Father Joe Walsh. He is no longer the youngest priest in the diocese. <laughs> he is very ready to pass that torch to you. On a personal level, today is a great day of joy for me because although I have been ordained a bishop for seven years, this is the first time that I will share the gift of priesthood with you to be ordained a priest. And so you are the first priest that I will ordain as a bishop. It's a milestone for my life as well. I say that as a disclaimer in case I make any mistakes in the ordination, so you'll realize this is my first time through it. And as I said previously, it certainly is a day of great joy for the local church in northern Nevada, and for you and your family, your parishioners, both in Elko as well as your parishioners here in St. Teresa of Avila. I thank all of you who have come from throughout the diocese to celebrate this great moment of joy with us and for us, um, especially with you, Deacon Renee. Now today we celebrate in the church's calendar the, the solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. It is a providential celebration for you, Renee, as you now are ordained a priest. Think of Simon Peter, who swore his denial of Jesus three times and tried to deter Jesus from accepting the suffering of the cross. Think of Paul of Tarsus, who ruthlessly persecuted the early Christians and supervised the stoning of the first martyr, Stephen. So, Rene, what are your plans? <laughs> Peter was a simple fisherman from the remote regions of Galilee, while Paul was a highly educated man from a family of stature and prominence as a Roman citizen. So, Rene, what do you bring to the ministry of priesthood? Peter died in the circus of Nero crucified upside down for the morbid entertainment of the Roman people, while Paul was beheaded on the banks of the Tiber River along the Ostian Way. So, Rene, <laughs> now just be patient. How will you be a priest in witness of your faith in Jesus? Peter provided pastoral care for the Christian community by fostering communion of life, purity of faith, and the practice of charity. While Paul was the preacher of truth, the doctor to the Gentiles, and the early theologian who helped people recognize and respond to the previously unknown presence of God in their lives, in whom they live and move and have their being. So, Rene, how will you advance the mission of the gospel in your life and ministry as a priest. On this feast of Peter and Paul, the gospel tells us about the primacy of Peter in his dialogue with Jesus, a conversation that was not a momentary exchange, but rather a conversation that really was a description of Peter's ongoing relationship with the Lord. That primacy of Peter is also presented to us differently in the Gospel of John, 
where Jesus asks Peter three times to affirm his love. Do you love me, Peter? And three times Peter responds, Lord, you know that I love you. It is from that Gospel of John that I will reflect with you today on the mystery of priesthood through Peter's confession of faith. Peter is familiar to you, isn't he? And Peter has much to teach you about priesthood. In his conversation with Jesus, we receive important insights into the responsibilities of discipleship and ministry to others. These insights apply to the life of a priest above all. The first thing to note in that dialogue between Jesus and Peter from the Gospel of John is the love of Jesus is to be the foundation of your discipleship and ministry. There can be lots of motivations people have for following the Lord, but Jesus wants us to do so primarily and fundamentally out of love. Sometimes we can follow the Lord out of a sense of duty or fear or hope for reward or to fulfill the expectations of others. All of these motivations may help us to take the first step in discipleship, but they will not allow us to become the disciples Jesus desires. Jesus did not ask Peter, do you believe me? Or do you respect me? Or do you fear me? Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? The challenge for you, Renee, is to grow daily in your love for the Lord as your Savior and friend. Because if you are not motivated primarily by love, then you will not have the solid foundation you need in your discipleship or your priesthood. Three times in the Gospel of John, Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? And three times Peter affirms his love for the Lord. Through this exchange, Jesus is challenging Peter to grow in his ability to love. When Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? He uses the word agape, which is the very love of God. Thus, Jesus is saying to Peter, do you love me with the same love that I have for you? Peter answers and says, yes, Lord, I love you. But Peter uses the word phylos, meaning that Peter is only capable of loving Jesus with the love family members have for one another. Unfortunately, we lose the significance of this exchange in English, but it is there in the Greek. Nonetheless, Jesus does not reject Peter for his inability to love as Jesus loves. Rather, Jesus tells Peter to put his love into action. Feed my sheep, tend my lambs. A second time as well, Jesus challenges Peter to love agape. But Peter can only love phylos. It is in the third question that Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? that Jesus uses the word phylos. In doing so, Jesus is showing that he is willing to work with where Peter is, with his weak and limited ability to love as God loves. And because Jesus is willing to work with Peter in his shortcomings, Jesus will lead Peter to where he should be, 
Jesus will help Peter learn to love as God loves, but it will take time. And that is the work of ongoing priestly formation. God is willing to work with you, Rene, as well. You're not perfect or perfectly holy, despite what your seminary evaluations say. (laughs) But it is your desire to be holy that the Lord finds pleasing. Keep that desire to be holy, to love the Lord and his people sacrificially and selflessly. God can work with anyone who's willing to work with God. That was true of Peter and of Paul. And it will be true of you in your priesthood as well. Rene, strive to live priesthood on God's terms, not your terms. When Peter affirms his love for the Lord, Jesus asks him to express it through works of service and ministry to others. And in doing so, Jesus is teaching us and you, Renee, that Christian love is not an emotional experience only between the disciple and the Lord. Rather, A disciple, especially a priest, loves the Lord present in others and serves him in them. There is an expression that says, service is love made visible. That will be true in your ministry. Let your love be visible. Peter is to make his love for Jesus visible in how he cares for those entrusted to him. And so are you, Rene. Peter is challenged to love all those the Lord puts in his life and not only to love those whom he wants to. Thus, Peter is to care for all in need with a selfless concern unlimited generosity and compassion. Rene, you will love Jesus in others when you feed them with your example of faithful discipleship, the solid food of faith, the nourishment and grace of the sacraments, and the sustenance of Christian charity and compassion. You will meet Christ in the people the Lord puts in your life. And there you will show your love for him in them. And Paul has something to teach you about being a priest as well. He creatively sought ways to help people understand the truth of Jesus Christ by interpreting the experience of faith appropriately and personally for those whom he met. He persevered in the face of opposition and failure so as to continue the ministry of the gospel no matter what hardships or obstacles presented themselves. He addressed head-on corruptive influences in the community that would weaken, distort, distract, or undermine the Christian faith. He brought the gospel to everyone, no matter who they were, so that all people could encounter Jesus and be transformed by that encounter, even as Paul himself was. Learn from the princes of the apostles how to be a priest of Jesus Christ. You are called Rene. It is a name that means one who is born again. 
You received the gift of your rebirth in the waters of baptism. And now Jesus is calling you to live your rebirth in a more intense way as a priest in his own image and likeness. Peter bore witness to his rebirth in Christ through his pastoral ministry. Paul bore witness to his rebirth in Christ through his missionary ministry. We need you, Rene, to bear witness to your rebirth in your ministry as well. Be Father Rene in name and in deed. Learn from the examples of Peter and Paul and be a witness who not only tells others about Jesus, but who is deeply in love with the Lord in your own life so that others will see and encounter Jesus in you. Both Peter and Paul were unlikely disciples of Jesus. Perhaps the greatest thing these two apostles teach us is that every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Never forget that insight, Renee. Desire to follow the Lord and Jesus will always work with your desire. Being a priest does not mean becoming someone you are not. Rather, it simply means living fully the identity in Christ you now have. Dear son, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people of God your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank? as a trustworthy co-worker with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully, according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. 
May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on his servant, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood.
Hear us, we pray, O Lord our God, and pour out upon this your servant the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts the one whom we present to your fatherly care for consecration. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand. Draw near, Lord, Holy Father.
author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, established among them ministers of Christ your Son in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus, in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles who were consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness this helper whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this, your servant, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he hold the office second in order, received from you, O God, and by the example of his manner of life, may he inspire right conduct. May he be a trustworthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May he be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to him and for the whole world. Thus, may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Christ the Lord, a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, offered bread and wine. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Peace be with you.
seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the preparation of the altar.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O God, who have willed that your priests should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saints Peter and Paul, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop with the order of bishops, this your servant who has been ordained today as, a, as minister for the church and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Li Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and power and glory Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priests and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
first of all, I, I want to say I don't think there's any kind of beheading on my calendar anytime soon. <laughs> but I want to thank all of you for being here today. A todos los que han venido, gracias por estar aquí en este momento. It's been a long journey, but it's also been a very quick journey. So I just want to thank all of you. You know, Bishop, of course, both bishops, my formator who's here, you know, the choir, beautiful music. There's too many of you to list by name, but all of you, thank you again for being here, for supporting me, especially as I've started, for some of you, since the beginning. And some of, some of you have just barely gotten to know me, but you've been there. So thank you for all that you've done. And just keep praying, not only for me is what I ask, but for all the priests, all the clergy. You know, we need it. It's a tough world out there, and we need more prayer consistently. It does help. You know, a few had, of you mentioned that you were praying for me. I felt it this morning. I was at peace. <laughs> I'm usually a nervous wreck. So your prayers do help. But thank you, all of you. Thank you all. The ones that are helping with the reception as well. Thank you. And just thank you, all of you, my parents. You know, mis papás, que sin ellos no hubiera estado aquí, mis tíos, hermanos que vinieron. Gracias a todos los que han venido de Elco por estar aquí en este momento, que han estado a veces desde el principio, en el comienzo de este, este camino, esta jornada, o más reciente. Así que gracias por venir, y los vamos a ver allá afuera. Así que we'll see you out there, I'm sure. But thank you again. And just to express uh, my own personal thanks to you, Deacon Rene, for being willing to respond to God's call in your life to follow him closely, and then to say yes to doing that in the life of a priest. Please continue to pray for vocations, especially to the priesthood in the Diocese of Reno. We need more young men like Rene to help us serve our Lord and serve the people as ministers of the gospel and the sacrament. I wish to thank the parish of St. Teresa of Avila for hosting us for today's celebration of Mass and the ordination, and all of those who have put their, uh, servant, put their talents um, in the service of our liturgy today. Thank you to everyone who has joined together, especially to the musicians and to the parish of St. Teresa of Avila.
May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of priesthood. Amen. May he make you a servant and a witness in the world to divine charity and truth, Amen. and a faithful minister of reconciliation. And may he make you a true shepherd to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.